The blood-brain barrier limits entry of potentially toxic blood-derived products into the brain, as well as cells and pathogens. Recent experimental studies have shown when the blood-brain barrier is damaged, these products enter the brain, which can lead to neuronal injury, dysfunction, and neuronal degeneration. Human postmortem studies have shown that blood-brain barrier is damaged in Alzheimer's disease. However, the timing of blood-brain barrier damage is not known. Using an advanced MRI protocol, we show that during normal aging, there is an age-dependent blood-brain barrier breakdown in the hippocampus, a region involved in memory and learning. This blood-brain barrier breakdown in the hippocampus is worsened in people with mild dementia or mild cognitive impairment. Interestingly, there were no changes in any other brain regions in the blood-brain barrier permeability. We also found by CSF analysis that there is an injury to parasites, cells which keep integrity of the blood-brain barrier. This study indicated that a blood-brain barrier damage in the living human brain in the hippocampus is one of the very early events and may contribute eventually to cognitive impairment and dementia. We use a novel advanced dynamic contrast and MRI, DC MRI protocol and post-processing analysis with improved spatial resolution and signal-to-noise ratio. Our method allows for the first time simultaneous measurement of the blood-brain barrier k trans permeability in different white and gray matter regions in the living human brain. For example, we were able to characterize the blood-brain barrier K-trans values not only in brain regions as large as the entire hippocampus, but also in the hippocampal subfields. The arterial input function, AIF, was determined in each individual, which is really important, particularly if the studied population diverges by age as changes in blood volume and flow may affect the AIF and the final K-trans measurements. For calculations of K-trans values, we used a modified path-like analysis. And finally, the post-processing imaging analysis was performed using our new software, Rocketship. In this study, we developed a very sensitive assay to measure regional blood-brain barrier permeability in the living human brain. We injected gadolinium, a chemical that helps visualizing the blood-brain barrier integrity in 64 subjects of different ages and with different level of cognition impairment with no and with mild cognition impairment. We perform neuropsychological tests to determine the level of dementia. This result suggested that the hippocampus, a brain memory center, was the only region where the barrier broke down, becoming 41% more permeable with age in subjects who showed no signs of cognitive impairment or dementia. These barriers were in average 24% leakier in older subjects who showed early signs of dementia on neuropsychological tests. In some subregions of the hippocampus, such as CA1, they were even more than 50% leakier. Our data suggests that early vascular leakage in the aging human brain begins in the hippocampus and worsens with mild cognitive impairment or dementia. We also determined cerebrospinal fluid biomarkers of blood-brain barrier injury and of different cell types within the neurovascular unit, including endothelial cells, pericytes, inflammatory response, amyloid beta, and tau. Cerebrospinal fluid taken from subjects who showed signs of dementia had a 115% increase in soluble platelet-derived growth factor receptor beta, a protein known to control pericyte growth and survival that we show is released during various types of pericyte injury. No changes were found in endothelial and inflammatory markers, amyloid beta, or phosphorylated tau. Experiments in genetically engineered mice confirm the idea that uh, soluble PDGF R beta is released into the CSF during damage to pericytes, indicating that damage to pericytes may be a critical step controlling the vascular integrity in models of small vessel disease and Alzheimer's disease leading to neurodegeneration. Our data suggests that pericytes may be an important target for developing treatments to avoid dementia. To prevent dementia, we may need to come up with the ways to reseal the blood-brain barrier. But before we do that, we also need to understand how genetic risk factors, vascular risk factors, and environment influence the blood-brain barrier in dementia and Alzheimer's disease. It would be also important to understand how blood-brain barrier breakdown influences cerebral blood flow and white matter connectivity and structural changes.